Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. On today's show it's August in Ontario and the hexes are hatching. These are large mayflies that smallmouth take eagerly. We'll talk about the techniques and the flies themselves. It's going to be a great one so stay with us. On today's show, I joined top guide Ken Collins, owner of Grand River Trout Fitters. Ken has promised me some exciting fishing today. First, we try some subsurface flies for pike and muskie and big smallmouth bass. But as the evening approaches, the bass will begin feeding on the surface as the hexagenia mayflies will start hatching. This is when we change our tactics up to the most exciting part of our sport, using dry flies. We'll start with sinking line, sinking tip, big 13, LC 13, um, five footer or seven, I'm not sure, but one of the two depending on the depth and what we're trying to cover. So it adds a real front end heaviness, then a loop to loop system into a piece of 40 pound straight fluorocarbon, and then a big loop, six, eight inches worth of hoop in the bottom end. Okay, now for this reason only folks, to be able to go through and take your wire and your fly and just tuck it through as quick as that. And now we're rigged. What will happen when the fish comes up, it's going to just totally take that whole fly and it's going to disappear. And when it does, what we need to do is we need to not lift the rod. Big mistake. Doing a regular hook set like you do for trout or some other species, over. Game's over. Right away. So what you got to do is you got to keep stripping, Bill, until you actually feel the weight of that fish. So it's important to feel the weight oh, first yeah. before you do anything. Absolutely. So now you see the fish, it can excite you. You don't want to be too premature. You want to wait till you feel it. That's right. Okay. And once you feel that weight, I want you to strip even a little more. Okay. And when you, you strip, and all of a sudden you just can't go anymore. It's, it's just tough. You're like you're stuck. Oh, and your rod tip's going to stay right there, right down in the water. Right. And all of a sudden everything's just going to be rock and roll loaded. Okay. And then at that point, you're just going to go because he's going to turn. At that point where he feels that much pressure on his mouth, he's going to turn. Right. And when he turns, we go crank with a side hook set. It's a side hook. It's yeah. a sweeping side. Sweeping side Not set. up. We yeah. don't want up. Boom. And what that does is it slides the hook out of the front palate of the mouth. Into the Back into the corner where okay. the meat's good. Casting these large flies is not overly hard, but at the same time, it's not pretty. You simply allow the fly to land on the water behind you and let the water load the rod. Then all you do is lob the fly forward. Oh yeah! You're gonna dance, you're gonna dance. That's your northern. It's a northern, I was gonna say, it's a pike. Northern. It's a pike. Well, it's in the same family. <laughs> oh, he definitely committed himself. Let the swing, guys. I'm getting you some good sunlight, and I hope. But I can't drop anchor till I get here. No, he's he's definitely hooked, though. Yeah. Oh, he's only on the tongue. But you got him. I got him. Oh yeah. Now. It's a northern. Look at that. You got him, buddy. There's what Ontario has. Oh, they're nice. Fly caught pike. We were actually after a muskie, but that's okay. Great fight. Great Ooh. fight. <laughs> I'm all wet. <laughs> yep. 
Just letting them get some water and some oxygen. He gave us a tussle there. He's had some, a lot more hook pressure than uh, Come on, buddy. There we go. Come on. Goes. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> a Ooh. bonus when you're when you're smallmouth fishing. There is pike and musky around. Oh, huh. well, I'm going to try that again. That we had a musky first take a swipe at it and he missed. And as it began to bring the fly back, a pike came and took it. So anything can happen. This is great. This is wonderful. <laughs> oh wow. And again, overhanging trees and banks. If you can, camera will get a shot of that. This is where we're taking them, and I'm casting as close as I can to the bank. There's a chance you'll get hung up, but it's worth the chance, as you've seen. It pays off. Ken suggested we try a couple of his favorite spots for large smallmouth bass. He has guided this area for years and knows this river intimately. Now, Ken, mm -hmm. what is about this hole that attracts so many fish? Can't tell you. <laughs> Nobody fishes it, sir. Nobody fishes it. Nobody fishes That's what it. what it is, eh? Well, you can't fish it. A canoeer can't fish it. So it's a fish, by the way. Yeah, well, I was hooked up enough. This is... <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> and this seems like a better fish. Uh, black. Yeah. He's dark. He's dark, could be. Yeah, he's a better fish. Yep. Oh yeah, this is definitely a better fish. Yeah. No, he's darker than the other one, yeah. He's dark, <laughs> but he's he, dark. I'll get the net out. He's a dark fish, so that means he's older. Oh yeah, he's definitely a better fish. Definitely a better fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You watch how much pressure you put on them on the upturn. Like, okay. you'll pull the hook through on them okay. when you really dog them. So let them play a little bit. If you really want to land him, you got to let him play. All right. Because otherwise you'll pull that hook through. Okay. He'll tire on his all, you'll see. But you're just putting just a little too many pressure to a big fish. He'll pull the hook through on this. When you can't move down right. and the current gets to pull plus he does, it's really troublesome on a hook. Okay. He'll make a mistake where I am, that's for sure. That's why I'm here. This is definitely a big fish. And uh, try that again he's, now. He's testing me completely. He's testing me completely. All right, I want you to swing the rod over toward me again. Here we go. With that amount of line. Oh, that's beautiful. He's toast. He's ours. Oh, he got his head downstream on us. That's not good. There we go. That's what we want. Now raise up the rod high. High. Oh, look at that. We got him. This is awesome. That. That's my 19. We there's got, our, we're into three pounds now. There's our big fish now. of the day. We're into three fish. pounds. Oh, wow. wow you wee. got a three pounder. No. How'd it be, Bill? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Ken. You are the man, I'm telling you, you are the man. You, uh, you know this river incredibly, and your, your teaching and, and coaching is second to none. Look at that, look at that pig. Isn't that, that is pretty? That is a gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous smallie. So look at that. deep water head start, get his head upstream, and just let him regain his power, and then let him go. And off he'll go. Awesome. Man, oh man, that was oh, that was worth the whole day. Oh, oh, just incredible. Incredible. There we go. Good fish too. Interesting how that works, eh? Yeah. Depth. 
depth. Oh, yeah. I'd say they're only big in here. They're only big in here, yeah. I they're guess only I better big. get this one on the reel. I've never caught a dink in these next two bays. Okay. Again, getting it down. Ken said I wasn't getting down by casting farther down. So he had me cast more to the left of the boat and allowed the fish to sink, uh, the, the fly to sink. And I'm... This guy doesn't want to come up. I haven't got a look at him yet. He's really yeah, shaking hard. 20 inch here. Oh, it's a good fish. 17. 17? Yeah. Drag, an islander. Yeah. Look at him going across the pool. He thinks he's salmon. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> now this, this guy really knows how to fight. He's big enough and he's got shoulders enough to break me off if I don't watch it. Oh, good jump. You need to shorten. It's gonna be a little too long. There, now lift. Right up in here, we can get on the screen on the netting. Oh, come on, fish! Don't make it so you can't see the netting. That's no fun. There we go. Good man. Now, deeper water. Deep water. That's what we wanted. What what Ken's doing now is is now we're we're going where he knows that the fish are going to be in these deeper holes. What you're looking for is olive colored water. Yep. And this is where you're finding them. And that is a good fish by anybody's standards. I would think so. Yes, sir. Oh man. And fight. Woo. Did you have a little tussle there? A little tussle. A little yeah. Tussle Just a little that. tussle. A little tussle. And I think I'm going to try that again. <laughs> oh great. <laughs> The flies we use today are large tube fly streamers, clouser minnows, crayfish patterns, and the dry fly we used today was a yellow foam hex. And they're getting bigger. Well, I must say, Ken, this has probably been my best day smallmouth fishing. Wow. I've not had a multi-fish day like you put me into but here. But you fish quite a cool. You fish some of those places. But you there. don't get the numbers and the size, this constant size that you've shown me. Yeah? Yeah. I thought I always heard that that was supposed to be the smallmouth capital of the world. Uh, no, no. I think I think you have the smallmouth capital of well, the world. I've always bragged that, but nobody <laughs> believes me. Yeah. No, that's about the best smallmouth fishing I've ever had. There we go. Nice fat. Look at that. Burp, burp. Very nice. Here's what is called a cripple, folks. This hex came out of this case. You'll see behind it here. You can actually see the wing pad busted right open. But for some reason, even though it's not windy today, that little jigger drowned himself. Now, unless I play a hero and save his life, which might be able to be done here. I'll pick him up and maybe just give him a chance to dry off. But there's a hatch that we're after. There's a hexagenia. That hatch is my happiest hatch of my life. So for me to save this little jigger and give him a chance to dry off and maybe do something tonight, makes me happy. But that's the hexagenia. The time had finally come. The hatch was on and I changed over to a floating line with a dry fly. I'm very excited. There we go, first fish. Yeah. All right, this is awesome. <laughs> very visual. <laughs> <laughs> Big flies on the, surface. on the surface. And boop, it's just like a, a toilet <laughs> flushing, my goodness. Oh yeah, exciting, decent, look at that, look at that. Oh, nice fish. Actually. Nice fish, yes. Yeah, whoa, what a way he goes. He's not mad. Yeah. He's happy yet. He's going to give you a <laughs> Dead drifting, hexagenia nymph, or dry flies I should say. We got a spinner fall happening right now. Well, these, These fish become very active at night. 
and he's he's actually really strong. Well, this, it's a decent decent bass. Decent bass. Very good. Very good. Where are we? Okay, we're bringing him up in a yeah. second here. Yeah, bring him. Well, that's the biggest of the day. Yeah. That's the biggest of the day. That's that 17. Is a good fish. Yeah, maybe 17. Yeah, oh, I give that yeah. 17. Good. <laughs> on the dry, on a he dry did flight. it. All on his own. Oh, man. That is exciting. Here you go, sir. Okay. Now, isn't that something on a dry fly? This is the best part of our sport is, is fishing on top like this. You just can't beat that. Notice the nice bright red eyes. Yeah. Ontario smallmouth. Bronze back. Bronze backs. Can't beat them, especially <laughs> on top. After spending most of its life in the water as a nymph, a mayfly swims to the surface to hatch. This is called the emerger stage. The emerger hatches into a dun, which, while on the surface of the water, is primary food for fish. The dun then flies off the water to nearby foliage, where it undergoes another transformation to become a spinner. When it becomes a spinner, it will join others and be seen swarming over the surface in mating flights. Some spinners will drop their fertilized eggs, others will touch down on the surface to deposit them. Finally, the act of renewing the species is complete. The spinners fall to the surface and then die. There you go. And there is the fish. Oh, yes, sir. Nice I got him. Job. I got him. You need to get more tension into him. He's yeah. got only a skinny hooking so far. Yeah. Oh. Give him a good plowing. That's it. Good. Thank you. Now you got him. I got him now. Yeah. Yeah. This um, this one feels a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah. No, he yeah, sucked he's sucked. Oh, yeah. I heard him. I yeah. heard him suck. Keep the rod high. I gotta keep it high. I usually like to get him on the reel, but I got a lot of line below me here, so. That's not going to happen on this one. Oh, that's all right. Just Hand keep them up. up. Just keep them up. Oh, oh, oh Candace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, what I must do, though, is I must oh, allow. Oh, this is a good fish. This is a good fish. There's an 18. I'll tell, I'll tell the audience in a minute there what I had to do in order to take this fish. Very good. Oh, this is exciting. Dig, 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 dig. Look at him dig. Yeah. Look at him dig. This one's pushing up quite a bit of water. This is what the Americans pay big bucks for. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Look at this. On a dry fly. This is Whoa. what the Americans come for me for. Oh, isn't that something? Oh, look at that. Look at the dry fly in it. Now, what I had to do is allow the fish to come up and grab the fly and then turn down before I set the hook. Isn't that a beaut? Oh, smallmouth fishing in Ontario. Classic. Classic, yeah. Bronze back giants <laughs> eating dries. Oh, yeah. My specialty. Mm -hmm. That's some fun. Oh, yes. Isn't that something? Look at that. That's right up to my middle of my arm. That's a good fish. That's 17s in 17, the 18s. Good 17 incher. There you go. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. That was just awesome. Dry fly fishing. There's nothing like it. Oh, yeah. The dry fly we use today is called the extended body foam hexagenia. Here's the recipe for this fly. The hook is a Mustad S82-3906 in size 8. The thread, 3 aught monocord in yellow. The tail, 2 dyed yellow hackle stems. The body, sheet foam in yellow. The wing, white hen hackle tips. The hackle, grizzly hackle, dyed yellow, wound parachute style and the eyes are extra small mono eyes in black. Tying instructions for this fly can be found on our website. There he is. You got, got him. <laughs> and I purposely waited a little longer. That was a good, oh yeah, yeah he good could one. Be, he could be big. The, oh yeah, he's, he's running late on line on this. Uh, I'm gonna try to get on top of him because there's a log jam underneath us. 
Oh man, oh this this one is definitely pulling hard. Wow, did you see that? That, that was just incredible how he come up and just, and took it, oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a well hooked fish, I'm sure, but I gave him a little extra time to take it. He's really playing, but he's not that big. So you don't know, think he's that big? No, oh, man, he's not. He, he's, he, just, he's just honking you. He's extremely strong, man, I'm yeah, telling you. He's not that big. No, he's not, is he? No. He's just a good player. Good, good player, yes. <laughs> Another boil over here. Oh, okay. The action's starting. I have people that come just for this for half day drifts. I get to go a whole month with this action, depending on which river I go to. Get him. Good man. Look at that perfect hook set by Bill. Look at that. In the top, right on, fish yes. didn't stand a chance. I'll let you let that one go there, Ken. All right. That's uh, definitely, definitely. The catch and release, I call it the deep six treatment. Ready? Whoop. Oh, very good. And got him. Yeah, got him. He's got not him. that big. But nice, easy take. And this is the time when action gets hot. Ooh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Another done. Wow. And you wait. When the bats get good, we won't know what to do with ourselves. <laughs> Now he's, he's putting up a fight. <laughs> yeah, he's not bad. He's 12. He's 12 for sure. Oh yeah, he's only about 12, yeah. I wonder. I'll let you let. I wonder. Up the look, camera. look what he's done. He's got him in the top lip. Yep. High percentage hook setter boy here. This is good. No, you see, what happens if he waits a little long, we'll have a deep in the gills shot that's dangerous for our fishes. Bill's hitting them perfectly timed. Beautiful. And another big done just going, oh yeah. This is <laughs> the magic part. And I see a boil down dink. there now. That was a dink. See the splash that went straight vertical? Oh, did it? Okay. That's a dink. That's almost a creek chub. When you see that, almost mm -hmm. looks like a, a, a fan right. that looks like a sail mm -hmm. of a splash, that's a creek chub. He almost spits when he comes right. out. Well, it's time to call it a day. This has been one of the best days I've had fishing, and I recommend calling Ken if you want to experience the same. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. Do you love fly fishing? Are you wanting to learn how to fly fish? then subscribe to the New Fly Fisher online magazine. It's free. Each issue is filled with great stories, information on techniques, tackle, and fly patterns. You can view this magazine on your personal computer, smart tablet, or other device. Each issue contains great stories, photography, and instructional video. To subscribe, go to www.thenewflyfisher.com.